Welcome to this walkthrough of JMG Sound's CyberDrive, the distortion to end all others. In this walkthrough, we'll dive deep into the groundbreaking features of this sonic powerhouse, from its unrivaled distortion models to its innovative array of effects. With CyberDrive, there are only three main things to learn about. The distortion modules, the feed module, and the effects modules. The rest are pretty self-explanatory, but we'll get to them shortly. The three distortion modules are essentially the same, but the magic happens when you use them together. Each module can work independently or in combination to create a highly customizable and unique distortion effect. Before diving into how these modules interact, let's break down how a single distortion module operates. Each distortion module features a type or model selector, along with mix, drive and control knobs. These can be further refined using the filter section on the right, which adds its own layer of complexity and flexibility, and we'll explore that in detail shortly. The distortion mode selector offers eight different categories, each with a range of distortion types. In total, there are 64 distinct distortion types to choose from, allowing for a wide array of sonic possibilities. The classic distortion emulates vintage analog gear like tubes and tape machines, perfect for adding warmth and character to your sound. The modern distortion features advanced multi-band distortion and wave folding, designed for metal and electronic music. It offers precise control for creating complex, aggressive sounds. The pixel distortion introduces bit crushing and digital degradation effects. It excels at producing glitchy, lo-fi textures. The shape distortion provides various wave shaping tools, including rectify and foldback, ideal for sound design and electronic music. The amp distortion models iconic guitar and bass amplifiers, tailored for rock, metal and punk. It captures the classic powerful tones of legendary amps. The pedal distortion emulates famous guitar pedals, great for rock, grunge and alternative music. It adds distinctive character to solos and riffs with effects like overdrive and fuzz. The Doom Distortion offers heavy, custom-built distortion types designed for metal and cyberpunk. It delivers deep, aggressively overdriven tones for intense, powerful sounds. <laughs> Lastly, the Freak Distortion explores experimental techniques like ring modulation and feedback, perfect for avant-garde and experimental music. It pushes the boundaries of traditional distortion with innovative, unconventional sounds. Once you have selected your desired distortion type, you can sculpt it with the parameters below. The mix knob adjusts the balance between the dry and wet signals, allowing you to blend the original sound with the processed effect. The drive knob regulates the input level to the distortion. It affects how hard the distortion is applied, typically increasing harmonics and compression. The impact varies by distortion model. Meanwhile, the control knob alters the character of the distortion. Its function differs by model, but can modify aspects like bit depth, wave shaper curves, internal filters, or bias offset. The in and out knobs manage the gain for the distortion effect. The in knob sets the input gain, where negative values can create a gated or splutter effect by reducing signal strength, while positive values can push the sound into overdrive with added compression. The out knob adjusts the output gain, helping to compensate for level changes and drive the final clipping stage to shape the overall output. Now let's dive into the intricate details of the filter section. This section has two modes, filter and multi. Filter. This mode features high pass and low pass filters, removing frequencies above and below the set points. Multi. This mode utilizes a multi-band crossover, allowing frequencies above and below the set points to pass through as a dry signal. In addition to the typical high-pass and low-pass filters, CyberDrive offers some extra features. It includes clip, automatic gain compensation, high-pass and low-pass pre-filters, as well as a filter type and slope selector. 
These advanced options make it a robust and versatile choice for a compact distortion plugin. Clip activates a hard clipper on the distortion module's output to prevent any peaks from exceeding 0 dB. Automatic gain compensation measures the input loudness and adjusts the output to match, which can affect the dynamics of the signal. For more controlled and predictable results, manually setting static gain compensation using the OUT control is generally safer. High pass and low pass pre-filters enables you to position the respective filters before the distortion. This feature is only specific to the filter mode. For both filter modes, you can choose the desired slope, ranging from 6 dB to 96 dB. Now that you're familiar with how a distortion module works in CyberDrive, let's explore how the three modules can work together. You can configure the three modules to function like a versatile three-band multi-band distortion effect. Start by setting all three modules to multi-mode. Assign DIST1 to affect the low frequencies, DIST2 to the mids, and DIST3 to the highs. Each band can be tailored with entirely different settings, including unique distortion models. Unlike traditional multi-band setups, these crossovers can overlap and feature varying slopes per crossover, offering more creative control. Experiment with combining multi-band, serial and filtering modes to achieve ultimate flexibility and tailor the sound to your exact needs. Quick tip, a percentage value will be displayed in the type selector to confirm that you've set the parameter to your desired value. For quicker adjustments, you can double-click the parameter and directly enter the value. Please note that you can rearrange the order of these modules, or any module, using the order section. You can position one before or after another, and so on. This also applies to the feed module and effects modules. And speaking of the feedback module, although it might seem straightforward at first, this feature is quite unique and offers more than meets the eye. It provides controls for feedback and can be utilized in various ways, including as a comb filter for guitar amp feedback, delay effects, or to make things really scream. Like the distortion modules, the feed module also offers various modes to experiment with, each serving a different purpose, categorized into three. Free, sync, and pitch. Free is a standard delay measured in milliseconds. Sync follows your door's tempo and is measured in musical measures. Pitch is a delay time calibrated to the frequencies of musical notes. It can be adjusted manually with pitch free, automatically detected from the incoming audio signal using pitch detect, or precisely configured via MIDI input with pitch MIDI. Once you have selected your desired mode, you can fine tune with the parameters below. The level knob controls the volume of the feedback signal. Adjusting this will determine how loud the feedback is relative to the rest of your signal. The time knob sets the delay before the feedback is fed back into the input. The effect of this control changes depending on the selected mode. The follow knob adjusts how the feedback signal responds to the input level. Negative values act like a ducking effect, reducing feedback when the input is loud, while positive values make the feedback level match the input level more closely. This can be useful to tame infinite feedback tails. The feed module also includes a filter section similar to the distortion module, but with some minor differences. Self enables a mode where the feedback is sent to its own input. In other words, there will be no modules inside the feedback loop. If this is not selected, then the feedback is sent to the input of the signal chain, passing through any modules on the way back to the feed module. More on this later. Invert inverts the phase of the feedback signal, which can alter its tonal character and create different effects. Mode selects which part of the signal gets filtered. Feed filters only the feedback signal, leaving the input signal unaffected. All applies filtering to the entire signal, including both the feedback and the input. Now, before I demonstrate the inner working of the feed module, I'll briefly introduce all the effects modules, each of which provides different and distinct characteristics to your sound. These are dynamics, tone, motion, profile and space. 
The Dynamics module focuses on how your sound responds to volume changes, offering tools like compressors, gates, transient shapers, and maximizers. You can select the specific dynamic processor, adjust the intensity, control the response time, and manage the overall loudness. The Tone module allows you to shape the frequency content of your sound using EQ and filters. You can choose the type of EQ or filter, control the boost or cut, adjust the targeted frequency range, and refine the sharpness. With two EQs available, you can be more flexible and creative within the plugin. For instance, you can use one EQ to cut unwanted sounds and the other to boost frequencies after all effects have been applied. The Motion module adds movement and modulation effects like chorus, flanger, phaser, and tremolo. You can select the desired effect, set the modulation intensity, adjust the speed, and control the stereo spread. The Profile module deals with resonance and cabinet simulations, adding character to your sound. You can choose the type of resonance, set the depth of the effect, fine-tune the targeted frequency range, and adjust the overall tone. The Space module handles time-based effects like reverb and delay, creating depth and ambience. You can select the type of space effect, balance the dry and wet signals, control the effect duration, and fine-tune its character. Now that we've covered that, let's put the Feed module to work in the Order section, where the fusion happens. To recap, the Order section displays the current processing sequence of the signal chain. You can drag modules to rearrange their order, or double-click them to enable or disable them. This section also allows you to control the signal levels coming in and out of the plugin. Right now, as you can see, the Feed module is positioned in the middle. This means that only the modules between it and the input will be considered in the feedback loop. Note that Self is currently disabled, so the effect will continue to accumulate throughout the loop. If we enable Self, it will only pass through the effects between it and the input once, and the signal will circulate on its own with feedback being sent to its own input. Pretty cool, right? Now, what's even cooler is that every module can be randomly adjusted using the Smart Randomization feature. You can select any aspect you want to randomize in the plugin and simply click Randomize. This is perfect if you're looking to explore new creative possibilities or generate unique sounds without having to manually tweak each setting. Aside from that, our top panel offers even more features. You can enable oversampling up to 32 times, adjust the global drive amount, control stereo width, switching between stereo and mono, mix level, and more. Like our other plugins, it includes a utility for managing your settings, allowing you to undo, redo, and save two different configurations for quick context switching. Additionally, it comes with professionally crafted presets ready for you to explore and use. And with that, I will leave the rest for you to explore. Master the art of sonic destruction with CyberDrive, where every twist and turn unlocks new realms of creative possibility. Grab your 15-day fully functional trial version at unitedplugins.com.